You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for March 20th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where all 537 episodes of our program can be distilled down to a single question, which we have asked of Republicans over and over and over again. What is your major malfunction, num nuts? It's the professional left with Drift Glass at Blue Gal. Blue Gal. I understand we uh, have a new sponsor this week. We do. We're welcoming a, an old sponsor, actually, a new and old sponsor. I've never been sponsoring this show before. It's Right Guard. Right Guard in spray on or solid, loyally protecting the GOP from its own stink since 1980. Right Guard. Now, there's a little joke that goes with this. Yes. Uh, the joke is that that is from a post I wrote uh, on March 4th. March 4th of 2006. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been at this for a long time. Yep. And uh, the only consistent through line, really, that you can you can sort of see from space is that Republicans need to go. They, they need to go. They fuck up everything they touch. And it, this is not a recent development. This did not happen with Donald Trump. Uh, the The line of succession of failed Republicans, failed Republican policies, failed Republican presidents, rat-fucking Republican uh, aides and adjutants, the entire degenerate party has been on full public display for 40 years. Well, and Drift Glass, when, whether you call it like Steve Bannon does, yes. deconstructing the administrative state, yes. or like Grover Norquist, you call it drowning the government in the bathtub— this is what happens yes. when when you do that, when you disable our ability as citizens to work together to solve a problem, you get this kind of collapse in the midst of a crisis. Well, that's what Lincoln said government was for, to, <laughs> exactly. to take on the problems as collectively that we cannot solve individually. It mm -hmm. also helps to have someone at the head of the government who doesn't fucking lie to you all the time and has 40 or 50 or 60 million meat bags who believe it and act on, on the lies they're told every day. That's what screwed this thing up that we were going to have a, a, a pandemic. There was going to be this terrible virus that is uh, thick in the United States. Now we're recording this on Friday afternoon and there won't be any news roundup today because the news is all coronavirus and whatever and you updates, shouldn't be getting it from us yes, you should be you should. getting it from someone much more immediate than yes, us we yeah. will separate ourselves from many other podcasts by not having a click thing that you can go to because if you're clicking on our podcast looking for coronavirus updates you're doing the internet wrong you, <laughs> should, you need to go actually look at cdc websites and your local website and your local health providers but what we can do is provide you with a little bit of context and the context is very simple this problem would not be anywhere near this catastrophic were it not for the fact the Republican Party nominated and elected Donald Trump and has been mm -hmm. backing him to the hilt ever since. They had to, they had a chance to get rid of him just a few months ago during a thing mm -hmm. we used to call impeachment. And they voted almost unanimously, unanimously in the House, unanimously minus one in the Senate to keep this monster running the government. So if you need to take your wrath out on anyone, make sure you take it out on the Republican Party party the republican party did this to you and the republican yeah. party will keep on doing this to you until there is no more republican party it's really just that simple there's a lot of problems that we in the democratic party need to solve there's a lot of differences of opinion but there are differences of opinion being fought over by grown-ups who believe in government and believe in collective action and believe in science none of which has been true of the republican party during most of my adult lifetime. Simple as that. Keep going. Keep going. Well, I was just going to say, <laughs> like, for example. People want to rant today. We have heard from many people. 
I have to stop and take a breath, you know. Well, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I would like to rant about what happened to us today, except I'm happy with what happened to us today. We visited. Well, and we should talk about this. Uh, speaking of local health care providers, yeah. I'm happy and I'm unhappy. Yes. Because we had to go to the doctor this morning. Right. Uh, we were scheduled for our regular checkup update, you know, review with our mm-hmm. doctor a couple of days ago. I called in. I said, I've got, I've had a sore throat this morning. And the nurse said, don't come in and we're not going to reschedule you until this has passed. And right. I said, fine. I hung cool. up the phone. Mm-hmm. Then yesterday, Drift Glass needed his asthma medication refilled. Yes. And they have a rule at our doctor's office that you can't get it refilled. Uh, if you're due for a checkup, you have to come in. And that's their blackmail to get you to come in and <laughs> pay them the the copay and right. make sure they bill insurance for an office visit. There, there is a good reason for it. But you know what? Yeah. The, certain rules need to be loosened up just a little bit right for now. pandemic. Yeah. 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 So uh, we went to Springfield Clinic, which yep. is where our doctor is they, they there are no hospital beds at Springfield Clinic. No, it is simply no. an office building with doctor's offices. But there is a, a really massive uh, medical district in Springfield. Right. Um, there are two hos- two big hospitals and lots of medical facilities here. It is the state capital. Yeah. And uh, people come from all over to go to the doctor and hospital here. Yes. Uh, that said, uh, we went in and uh, it was like uh, going overseas. In yeah. terms of a security check, everyone had, was wearing a mask. I had taken my shoes and belt off before I knew no. what was happening. <laughs> what was going on? <laughs> there were people behind a plastic screen uh, with masks on, uh, with questions for us about fever and throat and head and so forth and so on. All symptoms. They we asked answered those questions honestly, and yep. uh, then we're taken to the next step this is just to go to the into the building uh we were taking to the next step where they had this um head beam no contact right. temperature taking right where they be- waved this wand over my forehead and told me that my temperature was 90.6 90.6 yeah. i said no that's got to be wrong uh it was very inaccurate but then once we got in from the wind and they warmed you know our my forehead went back to room temperature they were able to take our temperature. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were providing masks to people who had uh, senior citizens with them. Yep, yep. Uh, and everyone had gloves on, and everyone had, you know, it was it was a thing. It took us five minutes to get through three mm-hmm. different screenings. And uh, then, if you've ever seen the Andromeda strain, where they go down <laughs> level by level and burn level their clothes level. at each level, yeah. it wasn't quite yeah. like that, but it yeah. felt like they had a process, and we felt comforted thereby. And we went into the uh, doctor's office. All of mm-hmm. the receptionists had masks on, mm-hmm. and it was it was really a thing. And lots of hand sanitizer everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no COVID testing that we could see. No. But, no. Uh, but that doesn't re- surprise us. That is the failure of the federal government. Right? They had rearranged the furniture so that nobody could sit. You know, no one could sit together. together. Right? All the chairs were three feet mm-hmm. apart. Yep. In all the waiting rooms, and uh, so it was. It was a different kind of experience, and we did yeah. see our doctor who did not wear a mask while he was talking to us, mm-hmm. but he maintained a distance. Uh, he didn't. He did not breathe into my mouth, and I did not breathe out into his nose. You know, mm-hmm. as as, as uh, I might ordinarily do. He definitely wasn't using uh, tongue depressors or right. Uh, he, you know, things were a little different, but. Uh, we did see our doctor and took care of business w- that way. I had blood drawn, and that was. Hopefully, you'll get your you'll get your asthma medication. Hopefully, yes. In the next twenty four hours, sooner or later. We are in lock lockdown here in Illinois as of yes. uh, tomorrow morning, yes. and uh, pharmacies and grocery stores will remain open. Mm-hmm. Nothing about marijuana dispensaries. I'm not yeah. sure what they're going to do about that. Yes. But, uh, that worries at least one person in this house. That worries more one than person should, in probably. our house. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the medical marijuana, I assume, falls under the same prescription right. guidelines. Well, medical as Mondays. Else. They do yeah. have medical Mondays here in, in yeah. Illinois, mm-hmm. where for medical marijuana patients, they go on Mondays with uh, fewer lines. You know, people who do not have a medical marijuana license shop, are to shop other days. So yes. Yes. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we went to the doctor's office and we're, we both uh, came out uh, 
so far so good, as yeah. they say. Yeah, there's I think it's the way to look at it. No, uh, no outstanding symptoms that we were that he was able to discover. That doesn't mean anything really uh, if you're not presenting. But you know, it's somewhat comforting to know that there's a procedure in place and that uh, they're calmly dealing with it, and that there's uh, medical professionals on the job doing what they do, um, and that they took yeah. us in. I mean, it was yeah. like we thought. I mean, the reason real one of the reasons we we opted out of going was we thought well geez this, this these guys must be getting slammed i mean yeah. but they're like no no come in it's your checkup come in for your checkup we can take care of it we're we're professionals here I'm like okay all right well and they, they they brought us right in when we told them what our situation was and why you know it, it was like well we were doing this we thought it would convenience others who were like more in need and it turns out we actually had to go they got us right in the next day uh, you and i have our appointments always back to back we go in together and get we our do. checkups together. We do. We like to hold we don't, hands. We aren't separated very much at no. all, ever, anyway. No. So that's just the way that is. Yeah. Uh, but that's uh, day. So how was yours? No, anyway. Um, you want to uh, talk about the debate last Sunday? Because I don't. Yeah. Anybody want to talk about the debate? And the primary? <laughs> is anyone? talk about that? No? Okay. Mueller? Anyone? I would like no. to shout out to, to Senator Bernie Sanders. Uh, who was oh, being... I want, I, first of all, let's mm-hmm. shout out to Middle Child. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Please. She, she voted. She voted for the first time in her life. She did. She's 17 and she gets to vote in the primaries because the she will be 18 when the general election rolls yes, around. Mm-hmm. Junior dude voted by mail. He did. You can vote by mail already in Illinois. That's already a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will probably be all vote by mail across the country by November. I'll bet you. Um and Ohio we know that is you, moving to do that with their primary. So you know that, that we're in Illinois. And you, the only news, if you've heard any about Illinois, that you care about at all or that would have reached your level of awareness is, oh, my God, uh, Chicago was a mess. Oh, well, there's certain parts yeah, of oh, Chicago. the election, yes. Yeah. Certain parts yeah. of Chicago were a mess. Uh, lots of others weren't. It was a trickle. It was l- low turnout. Low our, turnout. Our, uh, our polling place Everything ran very, very smoothly and just fine. Extremely smooth. Um, we got in. There were plenty of space for social distance. Um, they had us registered. They were cheerful. There was sanitizer available. They moved us through. It took us 10 minutes to get in and out. Everybody wore gloves yeah. and uh, took care of us. And mm-hmm. uh, they they go through and pull your voter registration, which is on a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And uh, they sorted by precinct and last name. So yep. I got to see, because they were leafing through them, and I have the same last name as junior dude i got to see his voter registration had a very large yellow friendly sticker on it that said voted early yep so they had already taken care of the fact that his vote by mail ballot had come in Mm -hmm. and they just had a sticker on it so uh you know sometimes paper and stickers and pens and things like that are just the way to vote you know what washing your hands works pencil and paper works Paperback yeah. books work. You know, I'm not entirely enamored of the way things used to be. There, the, the, you know, the whole uh, Jim Crow era. I can do no, without no. that. But no, there are but a you lot like, of things. You like talking into the microphone on the TV remote. I do. I, I enjoy that thoroughly, <laughs> and 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 baffling it because it has no idea what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Yeah, and sir. if you say the f word, it tells you it can't handle that kind yes. of language. I'm yeah. sorry, sir. Lidsville is not a thing anymore. We can't do that for you. <laughs> I swear it was. I swear. Um, but uh, but getting back to Senator Sanders, um, who was being pressured this week about, are you going to drop out? Are you going to drop out? Uh, and he told the reporter uh, to fuck off in those words because he was dealing. Did uh, he say I, the F word? I believe he did. Oh, my gosh. Um, because, you know, there's this pandemic and he's in the Senate and that was his top priority. And you know what? Priorities, people. I completely support. Bernie Sanders telling anyone mm-hmm. uh, who's pressuring him to 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 go, what's it going to be? What's it going to do? Just shut up. Just yeah. shut up. I mean, he'll deal with it however he deals with it. I might approve or disapprove. It's none of my goddamn business. He's a senator in the in the United States Senate, and they're dealing with a pandemic, and they're dealing with it uh, in opposition to a psychotic in the White House who keeps lying to people and putting human lives in jeopardy. And won't so, speak to the the Speaker of the House. Right. Will not speak to her because she impeached him. And, and so, so I'm, yeah. I am absolutely 
Senator Sanders' um, priorities are completely correct as far as I'm concerned. Come at hey, me and if you think glass, otherwise. May yes. I say, Drift Glass, uh-huh. that uh, Elizabeth Warren, she didn't use the F word, but no. she gave the same answer to someone who said, so you're going to endorse now? So you're going to endorse now? She said, I'm focused on the pandemic and yeah. working in the Senate. I'm busy now. Stop. Get back to yeah. me in a little bit. Um, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, all of the senators from my state and all of the candidates running for office currently have their eyes focused firmly where they should be. Um, I cannot predict the future. Um, believe me, I wish I could. Uh, I can I can warn about dire things that are coming, as you and I have been doing for a long time, as liberals have been doing for decades. And we're going to talk about that a little bit now, because let's get back to the we really do have to no fool and get rid of the entire Republican Party. All um, right, before before we do that, let's also uh, express gra- one bit of gratitude. Yes. Uh, yes about yes. the Illinois primary. Yes. Uh, once Elizabeth Warren dropped out. Uh, a number of her voters up in northern Illinois got to work and uh, across the country, I guess, got to work as well uh, to defeat Dan Lipinski yes. in the Democratic primary. And Marie yep. Newman has ousted the anti-choice conservative mm-hmm. uh, who needed to go and Dan he's, needed to go. He's our Joe Manchin, except he's we're, our not, Joe Man- <laughs> we're not West Virginia, you know, I mean, right, right. Presumably there's there should be enough you know, normal, upright, non-knuckle-dragging humans in that district to vote in an you would actual think Democrat. It's a blue district. Yeah. It's not a problem. But junior dude out. has a junior dude has assured us yeah. that no, 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 she'll win. It's a blue district. The yeah. primary is the election. It's one of those. Which is so, which, and there's plenty of Republican districts that are like that. The primary is the is yeah. the election. Yeah. Uh, this Marie Newman will win uh, the general election in this district. It is heavily blue. But well, it gives us hope for our local candidate, too. Who It who, does, because yeah. Marie Newman ran in 2018 and tried to primary Lipinski and lost by a, a very few number of votes. Mm-hmm. And this year, given the blue tsunami, yep. she was able to pull it off. Uh, Betsy Dirksen Londrigan lost in the general election in 2018. Mm-hmm. I think it was it's four votes per precinct, something, something like, like that. that. Some, a very you know, a very manageable narrow number margin, mm-hmm. right? And so we are very hopeful that uh, this year our district will turn blue. We we certainly hope so. Rodney Davis has got to go. Well, you know why? You know why Rodney Davis has got to go? Because he's got he's an a R. fucking Republican. He's a fucking That's Republican. Why. And <laughs> as we as we as we are now taking pains to remind our listeners. Because every now and then we say something clever and it goes out of the world and we see it usually in a column by Stuart Stevens two years later. <laughs> um, I'm writing a book about how they should burn the lifeboats. It'll sell a million copies. <laughs> um, uh, but every now and then uh, something that we blab about on this podcast catches fire. And we'd like to remind people that we are not in the third year of the Trump presidency. We are in the 40th year of the Reagan revolution. Yeah. And we are at the half century mark of Nixon's Southern strategy. And mm. there, here's a little quote from Kevin Phillips from 1970, uh, who was one of the architects of Nixon's Southern strategy, in case you're unfamiliar with it, or you want to pass it along to your friends. From now on, Kevin Phillips wrote, the Republicans are never going to get more than 10 or 20 percent of the Negro vote, and they don't need any more than that. But Republicans sh- would be short sighted if they weakened enforcement of the Voting Rights Act. Well, why is that? The more Negroes who register as Democrats in the South, the sooner the Negrophobe whites will quit the Democrats and become Republicans. That's where the votes are. Without that prodding from blacks, the whites will backslide into their old, comfortable arrangement with local Democrats. Mm-hmm. That's was mm-hmm. the make the Republican Party after the Civil Rights Act passed, after the Voting Rights Act passed, after Southern whites were furious with the Democratic Party, make the Republican Party, the racist party, explicitly as a matter of strategy. That is going back 40 years, 50 years, people. This is not a new thing. Donald Trump is the inevitable outcome of this party's strategy. And everyone who's been part of the Republican Party in a strategic at a strategic level, a tactical level, at a precinct level has goddamn well known it. This has been their party and they've been completely cool with it. Now, as I wrote, I'm not Kevin Phillips, thank God. Um, I wrote back in 2008, it's now 28 years later, and the conservative hate virus that hijacked a political party, a religion, 
and the national media and turn them into disease vectors still rages merrily along. Um, back in 2012, I wrote that the conservative retrovirus left us open to infection from a whole suite of opportunistic wingnut diseases, from Falwell to Limbaugh to Beck. Conservatism has permitted each of them and all of their mutant imitators to breeze past democracy's natural antibodies, an educated electorate, an honest press, or respectful politics, and settle in for a nice, long, parasitic feast. Andrew Breitbart was just such an opportunistic disease, another rat-fucking bastard child of Lee Atwater and Roy Cohen, who took a sociopath's glee in the wide, pestilential path he carved through America's political media. He destroyed people and pissed on their graves for fun and profit, and prospered because he completely understood and embraced what a collection of monsters and meat sticks the right truly was. This has always been the Republican Party. We were going to have a, 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 a disease, we we're going to have a virus, but it never needed to be this bad. The reason it's this bad, the reason that the Iraq war crushed us, the reason that the global economy collapsed, uh, all of this is laid at the feet of the Republican Party. The first thing the Republican Party did when Barack Obama was elected to fix their fucking mess was not say, how can we all work together? How can we get ourselves out of this terrible problem that we multiple problems we're in? It was, no, let's hijack the economy. Let's hold the entire fucking country hostage. And in that way, we can make a list of demands that this guy will have to give us or we'll let the whole thing burn. And we can cripple this guy and run against him in four years as a failed president or as a dictator which is exactly what they did. They well, ran against him in two years and took back the House. Yes, they did. That's how they, they did absolutely it. absolutely did. So the problem with the country, you can understand as a disease vector. And the, the disease is conservatism. It's republicanism. There are various carriers and vectors and mutations, but that's the problem. The Republican Party is the problem that's killing our democracy as surely as the, as the coronavirus is, is the thing that's, that's infecting us by the millions. It's incompetence, it's narcissism, and it's madness at the very top of our government because a guy that 40, 60 million of our friends and neighbors wanted to be there is now there. And it's a catastrophe. And it's, it was an avoidable catastrophe. And that's what drives me crazy. This is not an act of God. It's not a, it's not a meteor hitting the planet. This is something Republicans did to us. And it's uh, the latest in a long list of things that the Republicans did to us. And we have to stop thinking of this whole we bullshit. There's no we in this country anymore. There are Republicans and they're good people. There are Republicans and they're normal people. And these two groups are at war with each other. Mm -hmm. And that's really where we stand. Let's not forget also the war on women and the yep. war on anyone who is not part of the white male oh, yeah. uh, racist establishment. Because this is... The one thing that did come out, by the way, of the Sunday's debate, mm -hmm. there was a commitment by one of the candidates to select a woman as a running mate. Mm -hmm. And Joe Biden said, I'm going to select a woman as my running mate, which, by the way, means he's already asked her and she's already said yes. <laughs> you don't tweet that out unless you know. Uh -huh. OK, so he's done that. And I think we can guess on a very short list yeah. who those people are. So. Um, I'm holding up three fingers. Just, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. So uh, regardless of that, it's not just abortion, although abortion was commodified by the Republican Party mm -hmm. to be the thing that people will single issue vote on on let, the right. Let's 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 have a little history yeah. on that, just a little bit. Yeah, sure. The, the Falwell wing of the Republican Party, the evangelical wing of the party. You mean the yeah. one that didn't give a shit about abortion in 1971? Never yeah. gave a good, <laughs> never cared about it. They cared about segregation. They cared about keeping yeah. black people out of their schools and their churches. They cared about their yep. kids not dating those, those colored folk. They cared about miscegenation. These are stone cold fucking racist. And they learned that nobody else cared about this shit. So they looked for an issue that they could glom onto that would that would help win them allies. And they figured out, oh, abortion. Oh, oh, Catholics seem to hate that. Oh, oh, there's a whole bunch of people who hate women being given a choice with what to do with their body, their bodily autonomy. And they they jumped right on that bandwagon. And that's been their cause ever since. But it was never their cause to begin with. It was just a convenient way of welding themselves to a political juggernaut to get what they wanted out of it. And they did. And it was a, a guaranteed cash cow for them Absolutely. as well. Yeah. 
And yeah. if you and, and just watch the way, uh, you know, I never thought anyone could be more depraved than Jerry Falwell until Jerry Falwell Jr. came along. Right. And you realize, oh, they're just rotting meat. They're just they're just rotten from the from the head down. And the fact that these people still have power, still have an influence over national national discussions, still have a place at anyone's table anywhere is a, a testament to the fact that we could have stopped this virus 30, 40, 50 years ago. We could have stopped it 20 years ago. And we tried and we tried and we tried and we tried. And all the people who said, don't worry about it. It's no big thing. Oh, there's a little outbreak here. You know, Rush Limbaugh is just a little sideshow. Oh, Jerry Fall was just a kook. Oh, you know, New Kid Gridge is, is, is I don't, he's crazy. He's useful, but he's crazy. All those people who told us, don't worry about this. We have this shit under control. There are enough masks and tests to go around. We'll never, this may, will never be May true. I add, there are some great people at Fox. There are yes, some really good really journalists great. at oh, Fox. You know, nice there's, people at Fox. You can't condemn them all. There, there's, some right. good journalists, there's some good journalism going on over there. Bullshit. All the people who told you that, that yep. everything was under control and it would never get this bad, all still have jobs. All still have New York Times books. All still have gigs in the media. All of them are still there. And all the people who said, no, it will get that bad. It's going to get so much worse. You're tampering with dark forces that you don't understand. And they're, they're going to break the back of this country. All those people are still pariahs, are still not allowed anywhere near a microphone. And that's what drives I, I me. I think of all the all the things you've written, Drift Glass, of all the things that the bon mots that go out from mm -hmm. the Drift Glass uh, oeuvre. <laughs> This nation cannot long endure half fox and half free. Yes, indeed. True. I think that's my favorite. I True. think that's my favorite. You and I absolutely agree that a minimum universal basic income check should go out to every person in this country of $1,000 minimum during the duration of the, the pandemic. And then talk about universal basic income as a, as a national policy forever. But just as a stopgap method of getting us through this thing, that should happen. We have also come up with a, a, another policy that should be layered on top of that, wherein all the never Trumpers who told us this would never happen and are now like, oh, my God, the Republican Party is full of Republicans, have to pay liberal bloggers and podcasts $10,000 a month until the end of time. How's that? How's that? I think that's only fair. I work at home. <laughs> And I, I can name a whole bunch of podcasters and a whole bunch of bloggers on, on, on one hand, on two hands, who yeah. have never gotten a Washington Post column, who've never gotten a book deal, who are never, ever, the chair has never pulled out for them and meet the press, who do not have lecture gigs, who do not have speaking engagements, who are not solicited for their wisdom and insight the way that Bill Crystal is every fucking day. So yeah. let's yeah. just, let's, let's add, let's see if we can slip in a little amendment there to the universal basic income that has an exception for never Trumpers who should pay out you, the you ass. Gotta, you got to pay a percentage of your yes. earnings from stealing our stuff. Yes. Yeah. Pretending we uh, don't so, exist. So question for you, Drift Glass. Sure. 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 Um, Andy Slavitt had a good tweet this week he did. where he said that he's had a lot of them and mm -hmm. everyone should follow Andy Slavitt. Andy Slavitt was uh, one of the architects of Obamacare, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh he said the really sad part about having people like uh, Donald Trump or Boris Johnson as your president or prime minister is that they so badly want to be authoritarians. And the one time you actually want them to, mm -hmm. they cower in indecision. Yeah. Yeah. And I took that a little differently. I, I think they just don't believe in government. They believe in the cult of personality. Yeah, and I know no, we're going to get into that. Uh, that if they believed in a th see that's the thing about Dick Cheney, right? Mm -hmm. Dick Cheney totally understood how the Lego pieces of government could work together and be steered to to consolidate power and money for him. Mm -hmm. And he actually believed in uh, you know the the group think, get my people together. Talk to talk in private to energy producers, mm -hmm. have have private secret meetings and and take over large chunks of the government to run things, to actually run the ship so that it will benefit me. He got that. Yeah, uh, that that's not what Trump and Boris Johnson are or any of the people that they they surround themselves. They're, they're just right. there. 
they're there, they're there to vandalize the whole thing, to strip it, smash right. it, set it on fire, and dance in the dance around the flames. That's all they're there An for. The actual authoritarian does make the trains run on time yeah. because that serves his power structure. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And and you know, yeah. the thing that I, I never would have bet on, of course, is mm-hmm. that uh, a bunch of liberals binge watching um um Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, did you see Cuomo Please today? tell us what to do next, yeah. Andrew Cuomo. Yeah. Just yeah. At home, yeah. Like, okay, we can either watch The Outsider again or we can watch Andrew. Let, Andrew let's, Cuomo let's, lead. Yeah, let's watch him lead. Oh, my God. He's, he's all, it, it's so authoritarian. Uh, but it's like, no, we're shutting the shit down. And, yep. you know, that that I understand, you know, that there are libertarians out there um, who think that that is just, you know, that's a bridge too far. And you know what? Let's have this discussion in a year. Yeah, um, right, but right. right now there is such a vacuum, a deliberate, gaping, narcissistic orange hole mm-hmm. where a leader mm-hmm. should be that's sucking everything in and making us all terrified. Because yeah. every time Donald Trump opens his fucking mouth, he scares the shit out of everyone. You know, there's no see. This is the thing. He's never going to get any better. No, he's, he's never, never going to get any better. There's, unless, you know, he... Dana it, Bash, guess what, Dana Bash? Mm-hmm. He doesn't catch... He doesn't... Oh, look, he, he understands finally the, the gravity of the moment. No. No! No, well, they whacked him up on Thorazine, put a speech in front of him and said, read yeah. this. Yep. I think... Yep. Sniff, sniff, uh, this is beautiful. And that's it. That's all he's capable of doing. And, and when he's, you know, when he's not teleprompter Trump, he's a, he's a psychopath. He's mm-hmm. attacking reporters. He's making light of things. He's just lying his ass off and lying. This is the part uh, that has always driven me mad about Republicans. They lie so badly yeah. because they're not lying to me. They're lying to the, they're lying to Fox viewers who were too stupid or to uh, had their head too far up Trump's ass to ever bother to check to see if, in fact, he always thought this was a pandemic. I always thought I invented the word pandemic. I took the word pan and the word demic and put them together, made the word <laughs> pandemic. I invented that word three years ago. Yeah. And, yeah, and no, you said yeah. it was a hoax like five minutes ago. No, mm-hmm. no, no, big no. News, big, big news, news yeah. big news. And there are 60 million people in this country who buy this shit. And they have got to go. They have got to be shut down politically and shunned socially for the rest of their fucking lives. Period. Or else we're screwed. Which brings us to two articles you should read. <laughs> okay. Tell us about them. Uh, one is by Adam Serwer. He's a staff writer at The Atlantic. And it is... Donald Trump's cult of personality did this. I would highly recommend that. Um, The autocrat political culture that has propped up the Trump administration has left the nation entirely unprepared for an economic and public health care calamity. I would argue. And let's personally call out Jeff Zucker at CNN for that as well. Reality TV news has done this. And, And running these stupid briefings every morning as if they're news, as if these fake indoor trump rallies which is what this is this is propaganda it is not news it is propaganda and donald trump this is this is empty podiums of 2016 all over again oh, remember yeah. that when hillary clinton was giving a huge sub substantive speech to unions about jobs and wages cnn msnbc and fox all ran empty trump podiums the the empty Trump podium. Oh yeah, and you and I wrote about it all summer hour. long. It was right. the it was the Donald Trump empty podium hour. Yeah, always right. right. And, and the only thing I would I would urge Adam Server, who doesn't listen to me, uh, is is never veer. Please, everyone, everyone who owns a pen or paper or writes anything or says anything, don't veer off into Trumpism or Trumpists or Trump supporters. Right. These are Republicans. These are the same fucking Republicans they've always been. They haven't changed at all. They simply took the mask off. And don't be fooled by that rebranding Trumpism. It's it's the Tea Party in reverse, right? Right. Instead of saying we're a brand new party, you're actually labeling the old party so that you can go back and say, well, he wasn't a real Republican. Trumpism Trumpism? is something completely different from conservatism. It's not. Burn the lifeboats. The guy who says this bluntly and clearly. And is mm-hmm. scaring the shit out of his fellow Never Trumpers, is Stuart Stevens. Yes, he is. Yeah, uh, yeah. In the Washington Post, he's, the title of his article is Republicans Like Me Built This Moment, Then We Look the Other Way. 
Mm-hmm. The only thing I was would add is that Stuart Stevens owes me a check for ten thousand dollars. He owes you a check for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and maybe ten autograph books saying, "Drifty, you were right up along." Book to you, goddamn Drifty. You know, I'll blurb your book for you. Uh, you have to print the whole thing. Like, yeah, that. Uh, but I do appreciate the fact that he has gone into a place where almost no other Republican has gone. Right. Which is no, this was us. We did this. This is our fault. We fucked this up. Um, and if you're looking to someone to blame, blame me. That really is taking responsibility and yeah. and owning your own. And now, you don't I, see Charlie Sykes doing that. No, you don't see Charlie no, no, Sykes no, 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 no. saying, if I hadn't had a radio program, yeah, this then it would have been far less dangerous than it is today. If I hadn't been the Trump of Wisconsin. Right. If I hadn't been Paul Ryan's Rush bestest Limbaugh. buddy, right. oh, the Rush Limbaugh, the Rush Limbaugh of Wisconsin, exactly. If I hadn't been Paul Ryan's bestest buddy, if only someone had told me about how math works, and if only <laughs> someone had mentioned to me the entire history of the fucking party that I was a member of my entire life, and if only I had listened to those crazy libtards that I used to dismiss and, and brush aside, and and Stuart Stevens, uh, to his credit, actually, he doesn't quite say this, but they get awfully close to saying, you know what? Liberals are right. Liberals are right. Yeah. What, uh, there's no arguing this anymore. The, the thing we're arguing about is representation. If, mm-hmm. in fact, we were right and the Bill Crystals of the world were wrong, how is it we are still on the sidelines and Bill Crystal is still being promoted on MSNBC all week long? There's no answer to that other than, well, you know, well, you know. You know, wink, wink, you know, there's a club, you know, we're all in a club. You're not. You were too right too soon. And there's nothing uh, we, we you can forgive anything except actually being right about shit in a way that makes us look horrible. So sorry, dude. Um, and I mean that for all liberals out there, all all the people with a voice, however small it is, a blog, a podcast, an opinion. I feel for you because we've all been on the sidelines for so long. And now that it's brutally clear though we were right all along, the people who are controlling the microphones and controlling the cameras are still pointing them at the bastards who got us in the mess in the first place. And that also has to change a lot. Um, would you like to hear a funny thing that happened? Well, you were going to tell me about this story from January 31st of 2020, uh-huh. where there was a certain Treasury secretary who made a statement. Do you remember this? January 30th, 2020. I vaguely was remember. A very old man. <laughs> he was a very old man named Wilbur Ross, who has yeah. hand embroidered slippers that show mm-hmm. his his office. I believe there's a unicorn on it and money <laughs> and Scrooge McDuck. I'm not really sure, but you might remember that in January of this year, January uh, 31st, the article we have is from January 31st, 2020. Yeah, uh, Wilbur Ross was awakened just long enough to announce that the coronavirus might just be great for American jobs. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, what do we do with someone like that? (laughs) What do we do with a dry up? What do you do with someone like that? What do you do? Hmm. Well, here's what you do. You don't put him in charge of the fucking treasury. You don't put him in charge of anything. (laughs) You put grandpa on an ice flow and you send him out to the ocean. And what what the ocean does with him? He's actually the commerce secretary. I'm sorry, the the commerce. I apologize. He's the commerce secretary. Yes. And and his Steve opinion, Mnuchin is the Treasury Secretary. He's just trying so hard to write a check to everybody so they don't kill him. Well, if you put <laughs> Steve Mnuchin in a in a vegetable desiccation machine, <laughs> put the other end would pop and Wilbur, you get Ross. Wilbur Ross. You get Wilbur Ross. <laughs> just add water to Wilbur Ross. Hey, it's Mnuchin. Not in a not in a giving vein today, no, folks. Not, I, I feel like giving. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you, here's something that did amuse me in a dark gallows humor kind of way. Yeah. Um. I listen, as you know, Blue Gal, I listen to other podcasts. Yes, you do. And I listen to The Bulwark, which is a collection of Bush regime dead enders. You did not I listen did. to them. I absolutely oh, did. Lord. I listened oh, to the, Lord. the Bulwark. This The Bulwark is a little website uh, and a little podcast. It was started when uh, the rise of Trump um, blew Bill Crystal's weekly standard out of the water. Right. Um, they sold it. They gutted it. They threw everyone out out on the street. Of course, being Bill Crystal, you're not going to be out on the street for long because everyone apparently owes you a job forever. For so, life. Yeah. For life. So he and Charlie Sykes got together and decided they're going to open a little podcast and a little a little website called The Bulwark. And of course, like our podcast, 
Uh, they immediately have, were promoted by MSNBC all day and all night. They were invited on every show to promote their brand new podcast, their brand new website over and over and over again, which happens, you know, it's very common. As I said, you and I just can't, can't count the number of invitations we've gotten to appear on MSNBC or CNN or, or, or <laughs> go on tours and talk about our, our little podcast that could. But these guys suddenly were like, you have to listen to these guys. These guys are great. They've been wrong about everything since forever, but they're great. Now, remember, these are people who came out of the Bush administration. These are people who were completely okay with all the shit that was being done to Barack Obama. These are people who absolutely were never held accountable for the shit they said or did ever, ever, until Donald Trump came along and they found themselves on the other side of the door. And then they had to go out and scrap for a living for five minutes. And then, you know, the wingnut welfare kicked in and they all have jobs now. So, but the reason that Bill Crystal exists and Charlie Syke exists is because Republicans are never held accountable for the shit they say and do. So that's what makes me, that's what made me, me laugh because I wrote a whole, a whole uh, post about it. You can go see it. But the short version is, they did a bulwark mega cast on the COVID-19 virus. Good for them. And there was speaker after speaker. And, and there's this one little period in there, five minutes long, six minutes long, where they're wringing their hands going, you know what? Here's the problem with Kudlow and those guys. There'll never be any price to pay for that. You know, Larry Kudlow gets out there, just lies his ass off. You know, no one's ever going to hold him accountable. Nobody's going to be held accountable. In fact, we may have to be the people who hold people accountable here on this podcast because oh, Lord. No one Republicans accountable. And I'm just laughing my ass off going, you know what? The, the only reason you exist is because no one held your fucking boss accountable. That is his whole business model. Say horrible shit, do horrible shit, be incredibly destructive and know for sure that no one in the media and no one in politics is ever going to hold me accountable for anything. So now there's these three guys all working under the bulwark banner, just wringing their hands and tearing out their hair because all of these people who are screwing up the economy and are lying to us about COVID-19, you just know no one's going to hold them accountable. There's so much injustice in that blue gal. It's so uh -huh. unfair. It's so unfair. And I just had to, I listened and I, I actually did a transcription, which as you know, is painful for me because I just make yeah. most shit up. The idea that the podcast and website of Bill Crystal and Charlie Sykes is now going to be God's own hammer of righteous judgment because nobody will be held accountable for their actions. That is what makes it art. It's art. Our, Mitch McConnell took a three-day weekend, Drift Glass. He did. Yes. Well, it must have been important. Well, he went He went to celebrate with... Oh, Brett Kavanaugh, the dr drunky drunk, drunky drunk and the funky bunch? Yeah. Because they have a new federal judge they wanted to celebrate who's, by the way, unqualified according to the ABA. Yeah. Uh, and then they, he also wanted to get on the phone with all the uh, older wingnut judges out there from the Reagan administration and ask that they pretty please retire before January so they can be replaced with another 50-year-old unqualified, according to the ABA, wingnut. Uh, servant of Mitch McConnell's yeah. policies, uh, which I will say is a little encouraging because uh, Mitch McConnell obviously thinks he doesn't, he's not going to have a chance to uh, uh, put any more judges on after January of next year. And I, I don't have any respect for Mitch McConnell, but I do have respect for his ability to count votes. Yes. And I do believe that he uh, is aware that there's a problem mm -hmm. in the uh, general election in 2020. Winter's coming, Mitch. Winter's coming. Uh, trust, Trump's pressers continue to be terrifying. We're not going to spend too much time on this because uh, I don't watch Donald Trump anymore. I'm no, done. No. And, all done. Um, all, all I, done. Just, I just see people reacting to him with this kind of slack jawed. Oh, my God. Did he just really just did he really well, say that? That is the interesting thing uh, I saw on Twitter that uh, a lot of people who are home all day now are seeing this live. <laughs> And are like, oh, my God, is he really this bad? Is he really sniffing all the time? Is he really drooling? Does he really not know how to pronounce words? Is he screaming and yelling and, and biting off the heads of people giving softball questions? And lying, yeah. And lying and lying and lying. Oh, wow. When did that happen? And it's a 
it is a different experience to watch the whole thing, yeah. you know, and see the whole experience if you've never done it before. You know, it's been it's been what I've had to do for three years every day. Get up in the morning and see what he's tweeted is the first thing I do for work. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And I do mention that to the doctor, by the way, yeah. looping her oh, back yeah. around. You know, one of the things I said is don't talk to me about my weight. I have to get up in the morning <laughs> and and look at Trump's tweets first thing in the morning every day. So yeah. Yeah. stress eating. Goddamn right. All right. <laughs> A little drinking a little too much in the evening, perhaps. Yeah, you don't that, know. That happens sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, some notes here about regarding Trump's pressers. By the end of February, a Berlin startup had produced 1.4 million tests for coronavirus to ship around the world, and the United States said, no thanks, we can create our own. Now, after numerous failures, the U.S. has the lowest rate for testing citizens of any country in the world. We are a shithole country we are. as far as testing we goes. Are. Thanks, thanks, Republicans. Trump, Trump ended one of his press conferences by saying no offer was made to the U.S. to have a WHO certified test, says that any such news of that is fake, and then adds that the WHO test, the gold standard test for COVID-19, is a, quote, bad test. It's a bad test. It's a bad yeah. test. Yeah, no. Yeah. Then Trump gave himself 10 out of 10 for his administration's response to the pandemic. The only thing we haven't done well is get good press. Yeah. Uh, this week, Trump found his Jeff Gannon, uh, Chanel Rion, which, by the way, is not her real name. No. Uh, from One American, yeah, One American News. Yeah, that's her stripper name. One American News. It's her stripper name. Yeah. One American News, and Trump loves her so much. He loves he's it. had her. He's had her at at uh, Mar-a-Lago, and uh, you know she's hot and Asian and hot and asks questions that are uh, as softball as anything Jeff Gannon ever asked the Bush administration. Let me ask you, Blue Gal. Do you think Chinese yeah. food is racist? What I want to ask you, Drift Class, is do you think Donald Trump's handling of the coronavirus is sublime, superb, excellent, or awesome? Yeah, that's the Lou Dobbs scale. Is that right? That's yeah. the Lou Dobbs yeah. scale. And yeah, and by ahead. the way, the reason Lou Dobbs is doing this, the reason he is so over the top, insane North Korea media for Donald Trump mm -hmm. has has less to do with Donald Trump. And more to do with Fox News' terror that OANN, which is One American News Network, which is totally pro-Trump all the time and is the North Korean network yeah. for uh, news. Just, just so we're clear, OANN, I believe I'm quoting Charlie Pierce now, is for people who find Fox News too Noam Chomsky-ish. Noam you know? Chomsky-ish. It's yeah. too, too left. Too yeah. lefty. Uh, but Lou Dobbs is there to help Fox News hold on to people who would otherwise leave for OANN. Right. It is a marketing thing to make sure that those people who would never go to CNN because that's all fake news and Rachel Maddow is the left. And so the only way they will leave Fox is if they're not true enough to Trump. Mm hmm. And there is an alternative for them now. It's OANN, and Donald Trump has tweeted about OANN. Mm -hmm. And so when you see Lou Dobbs doing this thing, there isn't possibly even a better president in the United States than Donald J. Trump. I don't understand how anyone could not worship the very ground he walks on. The reason he's doing that is to hold on to that market. And when Period. Trump called on this this fake reporter, it was, oh, OANN, One American News, you guys are great. You guys are great. You're so good to me. You're so fair. You're so kind. Such good. And he, it's just absolutely North Korean shit. Yep. And honestly. And transactional. As yeah. everything Donald Trump does is transactional. Yeah. Absolutely. And once yep. he is driven from office with pitchforks and torches, uh, he will probably go to either Fox News or OANN, whichever has the bigger paycheck and the better ratings and gives him a, a platform to scream about how the deep state, you know, destroyed his presidency and how he had everything under control until the libs and the dems and the god the, the the negroes and the chinese and the mexicans of course can't can't stop hating them uh wrecked his perfect 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 presidency uh cuz with their fake news and their fake racism FYI we wanted to let people know some good things that are happening yeah and you want to talk about chicago whiskey distillery and the yes. good things they did there is a chicago whiskey distillery which is switching over to the production of hand sanitizer and yeah. I, I posted a little thing on Twitter saying, this is just great. This is excellent. 
And I got a, a, a ping back from someone who works there says, yeah, my, this is my boss. My boss is doing this. And he he's talked a little bit about back in World War II when tractor factories were, were repurposed to make tanks. And we had a little back and forth about how in times of crisis in the past, the United States has ramped up production of things to a staggering degree. Um, in 1939, the total aircraft production for the U.S. military in this country was around 3,000 planes. Mm -hmm. By the mm -hmm. end of World War II, the United States had scaled up production so that it had, cre it had manufactured 300,000 aircraft. Mm -hmm. We can do big shit. We can make ventilators. We can make masks. We can make protective equipment. We can do all those things. And there's all kinds of private... But we could have done that six months ago and been ready for this. That's and we're not thing. because of Republicans. That's the and fucking that's the thing. thing. It is, yeah. This is entirely laid at the foot of Donald Trump and the Republican Party, who they're... The sa uh, is that, if I understand correctly, the same day the first patient showed up in South Korea, uh, the same day that it was the first patient in the United States. And we heard from a listener of ours who is in the healthcare industry railing about Republicans talking about, well, Obama and H1N1. And she noted that she still has a pallet of Tamiflu from mm -hmm. the H1N1 days that was already ready already for her patients when that pandemic started, mm -hmm. that it was ready for her. So competence matters well, and, and government matters. The first reaction from all the wing nuts I encounter online, social media, even in my civilian life, was, but what about the swine flu? Even Donald Trump was on there, go, you know, thousands died, Obama did nothing, et cetera. And there's just one fact check organization after another online. You can look up, it takes 90 seconds. Like, no, that is not what happened. That is a fucking lie. That is absolutely not what happened. The government responded as quickly as possible. They took, they took extreme measures, and they brought it under control. Yes, there were people who died from it. Yes, it was tragic. But the way that the Obama administration handled the Ebola outbreak in Africa and the, the mm -hmm. way they handled uh, the swine flu in the United States were like a letter perfect examples of how you're supposed to behave. And, but it was the first reaction from these fucking meatheads was Is well, what about Obama? Obama. Obama was worse. But that's, her emails. But yeah. her emails. That's yeah. all yeah. that is how their brain is wired. And it, it's never going to get unwired. That's all they know how to do. And once that excuse failed, they got real quiet. And you can see yeah. on Fox News, uh, I think you and I talked a little bit about emergency rooms filling up with what doctors are calling moron whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> Fox we, News viewers. we don't expect that's going to no, happen. No. But it's uh, it would be nice if it, if it did. It is that it is that reaction that a Fox News viewer has when they the the shit that Sean Hannity and Judge Janine and the rest of those pinheads were telling them on Monday is mm -hmm. completely reversed by Thursday, and they're and and you can just see in in their in the eyes of these Fox News hosts begging their 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 viewers not to remember what they just fucking said yeah. three days ago and so they just get louder yeah. and start threatening to sue as hannity did well, i'll I, sue you for libel no we got the video of you saying it well and, so. and they, they go back to the old george bush you know uh, are, what do you why, why do you hate america you yeah know, why do you why hate america you get this president as he heroically we, we've fights get, the virus this is a crisis we can't uh call people accountable in an emergency an emergency I, yeah you know cut and run and and We've been through this before. We haven't been through this particular iteration of it before, but this is how they always behave. And this is how they always will behave until they are forcibly stopped from behaving this way. Rebranding as independence and Trump wasn't a real Republican and I never liked the tweeting. Yeah. So yeah. It, here it is. In it, It's March and we know this is coming. So what yep. do we do to prepare for the next iteration of the Republican Party, which is I never liked the tweets, never supported him or... If only Donald Trump had gotten the support of liberals, this would have been so much easier. But they fought yeah. him constantly. And yeah, forget it. it. Forget it. Um, forget in other it. good news, just so you know. Well, this just tickled me that yeah. the Met. I'm, I'm sorry that the Met, of course, had to cancel the rest of their season. Yeah. Uh, the, they are going to continue to stream Encore presentations uh, for the duration of the crisis. And it just tickled me that next week's schedule of transmissions is all Wagner. <laughs> 
with fitting themes of destruction do and redemption. I don't need to listen to Wagner at this point, but it is the soundtrack of this this era. Um, Kamala Harris is fighting the madman in the White House from her seat in the Senate and reading to children in quarantine. Yeah, Yo-Yo Ma is streaming cello music from his kitchen. Tonight, Keith Olbermann starts an uh, evening series of reading Thurber again uh, on Twitter. So mm -hmm. follow Keith Olbermann on Twitter and well, you can hear James Thurber stories. What's your knitting group doing? Uh, knit apart together is the hashtag. We, I, I think I invented it. I don't think I made that up. But mm -hmm. apart together is, you know, a big thing that's going on online right now with people building community. Our Sunday school is meeting online. Uh, and knit apart together is something that we're working on. And there's, there are online knitting, uh, things happening on Ravelry where knitting groups are getting together and chatting and talking about what they're making. And a lot of us are doing charity knitting. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of fun. Uh, we don't want to leave without talking about, um, the stock dump of Richard Burr yeah. or Burrisma yeah. as they're calling it. Yeah. Uh, this is another example, though, of the but what about mm -hmm. uh, it turns out that Diane Feinstein sold stocks low yep. and lost money. Yep. And uh, that is now a huge what about she sold stocks, too. So yes. she, she, both sides are just as much criminals as anything else. Richard Burr sold major holdings and he sold them high mm -hmm. <laughs> before the crashes as a result of covid. and. Uh, Mrs. Loeffler, who is a, she and her husband are billionaires, reported 27 stock sales worth uh, approximately $6 million starting on January 24th. On that day, uh, she had had a briefing on the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And she also purchased stock that day in the company that uh, owns GoToMeeting for online uh, meeting groups. So We should mention the fact that her husband mm -hmm. is the chairman of the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know? Yeah. And you, you know gotta what? wonder about that. And you know what? If it turns out Diane Feinstein did some dirt, out she goes. Yeah. You don't I don't think you understand, uh, dear Republicans. We want all the bad people to go. Oh, we want right. all the criminals to go. Um, and James Inhoff, I mean, no one's gonna pry him out of his seat, but he was he was dumping stock too. So you know what? Uh, I'm all in favor of getting rid of all the bad people, then we'll count up who's left after that. How about we do that? And may I remind everyone that Elizabeth Warren still has a plan to stop all federal office holders from owning individual stock. Yeah, she does. So uh, she's had she's had a pretty good couple weeks. Yeah. Um, be having having suspended her campaign, she's been on TV a lot to talk about what st stimulus actually looks like when it works and how to avoid the failures of the 2009 stimulus. And basically, it's don't compromise with the Republicans. Is her answer. School's out for summer. We're yeah. we're home. We oh, don't yeah. expect our kids are going to go back to school this year. Uh, junior dude is definitely not going back. They've already decided that. Yeah. The girls are preparing for distance learning. Uh, spring break is upon us, but after that, they will be doing distance learning. And uh, the AP tests have moved online as well. Yes, have, so that's all news. going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. I think we're done, right? Uh, Science Fiction University, you were going to say. Yeah, Science Fiction University. We will have another episode this weekend. This episode weekend? Episode four is coming out. I look forward to listening to it. Do you know what it's about? Yes. It's about uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey. I've heard of that. And Neuromancer. I've heard of that, too. <gasps> yeah. Wow. Well, I now I have something to live for, Blue Gal. <laughs> Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. Drift Class, you'll appreciate this. This week's Internet Kitty is named Spike. Yeah. Spike is Spike is a girl kitty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this picture of Spike, uh, Spike is a girl kitty. That's what happens when you let a guy name a cat. We rescued yeah. her from the Humane Society. We went into this large room with lots of kittens, and I just sat down on the floor, and within a minute, Spike crawled into my lap, and that was it. I'd do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had the same thing happen with my my cat, Jake, who was also a lady. Yes, um, she was. Uh, the place where I was working at the time, uh, I had a cat pass away, and was looking for a, a, a new addition to the household, and uh, the place where I worked uh, had a back dock, and the dock, th th it was hundreds of people in and out of the building all, all day long. And I knew the guys who worked on the dock and they were feeding the cat a little cardboard box and some cat food. 
And of all the hundreds of people that came in out of the building, Jake walked up to me and started bumping her head on my leg. This happened. Oh my goodness. This happened enough that I knew that this was my new cat. And I was being reminded that I needed to take this cat to the vet and bring her into my home. So, and Jake begat Zeppo and Zeppo was a delight. Who was also a girl. Was also a girl. <laughs> Who was that? Guys naming girl cats is pretty funny sometimes. Yeah. 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 So just trust the cat to, to pick you out. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And Drift Class, uh, Spike was sent in to us by Bob, who wants you to know that he has been a reader, listener of Drift Class since back in his commenter days at Steve Gilliard's. Oh, my blog. God. Oh wow. My God. That's old school, baby. But was was he? Thank you, Bob. Was he bloomy back then? <laughs> now, see, now, that no is way. a deep, deep cut into the Steve Gilliard comment section from the mid 2000s that only. You want to. Ex- no. I don't want to explain no, it to you're not anybody. Gonna explain it. There are three people out there that I know of that will get this, and everyone else is like, "Who the what the hell are you?" T-? Ne- uh-huh. Never mind. All Never right. mind. It's it's a All thing, right. and it's a thing that I will share with you later um, at, during the uh, uh, for pay. Uh, <laughs> we don't do that. The professional love podcast after dark. We don't uh-huh. do that. We're not doing that. We don't that? do that. Never oh, mind. Shit. Okay. Hey, well then, don't forget. Spike recommends to everyone freshly poured cat food. Our fake sponsor. Whether mm-hmm. you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct. Your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the only food they eat is freshly poured. And you can visit Spike at our Facebook page or website or all over the internet. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. We love you, postal workers. Uh, during this time, you're still going to work, and we so appreciate you. We have reserved the right to read your email or letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself in the drive through Buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address, Patreon information, it's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. We do appreciate that. That does help us out, and we appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class. How are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Galley, Internet Kitties hear very good things about these books that people used to use to learn stuff and entertain themselves. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.